Canada will join the US on the first crewed mission to the moon since the Apollo missions. Launching in 2023, a Canadian Space Agency astronaut will be part of Artemis II, the first mission to carry humans to lunar orbit in over 50 years. This will make Canada only the second country after the US to have an astronaut in deep space. Et donc voyez le premier Canadien autour de la Lune and send the first Canadian around the moon. The treaty also confirms a second later flight for a Canadian astronaut to the Lunar Gateway. Now, Canada will also build and operate the Canadarm3, and it will be part of a new space station that will orbit the Earth. We heard it there. It is called the Lunar Gateway. And Bain said the Lunar Gateway will be a jumping off point for missions to the surface of the Moon and eventually to Mars, perhaps even beyond. Well, with that, we are happy to welcome to the program today Canada Space Agency astronaut David St. Jacques. He joins us in Montreal for Mars. So, David, good to see you again. Thanks for joining us today. Hi, Michael. What a great day. Yeah, well, you know, I want to begin there because as an astronaut, as a Canadian, how exciting is this news? Yes, uh, Lunar Gateway, but also sending a Canadian astronaut uh, to orbit the moon and also to the gateway itself. Amazing to think that uh, a fellow Canadian is going to see those views, you know, of our planet seen from the moon. A uh, very similar mission to, though, for those who know about space history, the Apollo 8 mission, the first time that we left uh, the vicinity of Earth. We're going to send the spacecraft to the moon, orbit around the moon a couple of times, and come back to Earth. Uh, it is, uh, it's really, really a great moment of joy and pride uh, for, for all of us. Okay, pride aside, I, I do also wonder about the importance of these developments uh, for the agency, but also for the future of Canadians in space in general. How important are these steps to make sure that there is a future for Canadian space exploration? So, you know, Canada has a long and proud legacy of being in space, you know. We were the third nation to launch our own satellites. We heavily depend because of our geography on space assets, space infrastructure. Not a day goes by without any of us using space assets. And we've been part of space exploration from the very beginning, very trusted partners with our robotics technology. You know, the, uh, Mark Garneau was the first non-American to be welcome on board the space shuttle. And again, we're kind of continuing that uh, tradition of uh, Canada being the, you know, the first kind of welcome friends. Uh, and so I think it's, I'm really proud that we are part of the concert of nations who are pushing the boundaries. And space exploration is something we should always see as a it's like, a, like a, you know, a little challenge to scratch our heads and come up with innovations that then benefit us all. And that's always been, you know, the looking back, that what's always happened with space exploration. We all benefit so much. We create amazing jobs, whole entire new sectors of, the, of industry, uh, and this is just going to continue. Plus, the, of course, the capacity to generate dreams and encourage uh, our youth. Uh, to pursue uh, their own dreams. Mm -hmm. I'm going to pick up on the youth in a second uh, here, but I do wonder about the crewing of the next few missions. Mm -hmm. uh, do, are you perhaps in the running? Who knows? Nobody knows their space future. You know, we, so Canada, we have uh, four uh, qualified active astronauts. I'm one of them. Uh, but the way you have to understand the spirit among the astronaut corps is one of utter collaboration because what is asked of, of us as crew members is impossible to achieve on your own. You need the help of your friends. You need the support of everybody. When I was on for the space station, other Canadian astronauts, you know, were working so hard in the background, backstage, if you want, uh, uh, kind of enabling my mission. And so same thing, whatever, whoever uh, is chosen for that mission, the other three will be working hard to enable it and make it safe. Uh, so uh, we'll know, we'll see, we'll see when these, uh, the crew is announced, but that's kind of not what we sort of think too much about. We really focus on making sure it will be a success, whoever is on those missions. Because as you can imagine, uh, there's a lot of perils in those missions. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, absolutely. And as you say, one never knows their uh, space future, although I know I'm never going to go to space. Just putting it out there. Uh, but, you know, I, I do, you, you mentioned the youth, and certainly uh, the Artemis mission, as we say, the first time a Canadian uh, will be uh, going in the direction of the moon, orbiting the moon. Uh, the Apollo mission uh, before, 50 years ago, those missions uh, sparking imaginations of many right around the world. What do you hope Artemis does to spark the minds of young Canadians uh, between now and 2023 and beyond? 
So, you know, I think we can afford to dream even further. One day, <clears throat> one day we're going to go to Mars. And, uh, you know, I hope Canada is always part of this next few steps. Uh, the people who will go to the moon are, you know, alive and ticking right now. The engineers, the scientists, the astronauts who have been involved in further missions, they're kids right now. And as we know, and if everything great that has ever come out of humanity always started as a dream in the head of a child. And I think uh, we need to do everything we do to kind of nurture uh, that most precious of res natural resources, if you want, which is uh, the dreams of children. David, always good to speak with you. Thank you for this uh, big day, and I'm so glad you're here to share your thoughts on it. Thank you, Michael. Thanks for sharing the news. Uh, this is really, I think, a great moment of pride uh, for, for everybody. Absolutely. And that is Canadian astronaut David St. Jacques.